Okay, so it's seven o'clock. Uh, we'll call this meeting, Yale Springs Planning Commission, to order. Um, Judy, could you take the roll, please? Yes, Reed. Here. Sims. Here. Styles. Here. Pozell. Here. Doden. Here. Also present are planner Denise Swinger and village solicitor Jessica Walker. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have an agenda uh, in front of us. Um, any changes or comments? One thing Judy suggested is that we flip the public hearings. Um, since Frank is going to have to recuse himself on the brewery thing, if we do the other one first, well, then we can deal with that while you're up here and then you're not bouncing around. Okay. If that's okay with you. That would be fine. Okay. Is that, that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next item is review of the minutes from the last meeting. Once again, concise. Thanks, Judy. Any um, comments on the first page? Second page? Third page. Fourth. And I won't even say about the fifth since there's two lines on it. Uh, if there's no changes, do we have a motion to accept these minutes? That's I written. move approval of the minutes. Second. All in favor? I'm going to abstain. Aye. 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 Rose is abstained since she got here after part of the meeting. Um, next item is um, communications. Uh, we have some additional communications with respect to the um, uh, brewery application. Um, they're on our desk and in our packet as well. Uh, next item is council reports. Do you have anything to report? Uh, let's see, one thing was uh, they uh, restructured the uh, utilities uh, dispute uh, committee. Uh, it'll probably be an article in the newspaper on that. Uh, also, Melissa put in, the, in our packet uh, more description how the uh, lodging tax will, will work. Uh, there's a website now. And I think it's 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 on the uh, the village side, I believe, and uh, it has some uh, frequent frequently asked questions uh, with answers. And before we go any further, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, this will be my last time setting up here. And then in. A week, I can say it again, it'll be my last time set up here. Last time here as a planning uh, uh, council rep, uh, I've enjoyed working with all of my old and, and new colleagues, and especially Matt, for the last few years that uh, I've been on planning, Matt, Denise, Judy, and our solicitor have have helped us immensely as we we go through uh, many petitions and so forth. Um, um, I'm not saying I'm not sad for leaving, uh, <laughs> but uh, this job and this commission is to me the most important thing that we have uh, for the village. And without these folks setting up here, uh, a lot of the progress that has been made uh, over the years may not have been done. And, and, and they do a yeoman job. Uh, you see us up here for a couple hours, but when we get our package, these folks take the information and they go out and they look at the sites that are going to be presented for us and so forth. So it's a, it's a little bit more than the hour and two that you that that you see is that, 
but again, I think the community has been better for the for the whole. And uh, if I can pass anything on to uh, the remaining folks here, is continue to be yourselves. Question: Don't let folks influence you. Uh, and speak up when you feel you should. And uh, hopefully you will continue on when your terms are up. You, you see the benefits and you see what you have done for the community and continue to stay on with us. And Matt, <laughs> you've been here a while. <laughs> and, and I know you, you've been thinking about uh, where you might be later. But uh, if if you decide to leave, uh, I won't be on council and I won't, won't be here. But well, there'll be a vacancy. I, yeah. I, you can, <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, I really appreciate the effort. Hey, well, that thanks for the kind words. In, in your service to the community. Thanks. Thanks. Don't have anything else to say? Okay. Well, I'm not Do fully self conscious. Do we know who's replacing so. you on planning commission? It will be one or five councilmen. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know uh, the first meeting in January. Right. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jerry. Uh, the next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. This is uh, where um, if you have anything to address planning commission about that is not on the agenda, um, this is an opportunity if there is an item that's already on the agenda, one of the public hearings. There'll be a, a, a time for comment during each of those hearings. So um, if you have comments about those, just hang on and, um, and we'll, we'll get to that as well. Um, so if there are no citizens' comments, um, public hearings, the first, uh, let's do the text amendment sure. first, yeah. Denise, if you would kind of describe the right. changes. Previously, the uh, short-term rentals were a conditional use and when the lodging tax uh, discussion came up um, it was decided by the council to change that language to uh, transient guest lodging which we've already previously discussed uh, at the planning commission level um, what uh, they went ahead and did at the september 5th meeting was to pass a second reading of the ordinance creating the the lodging tax and then they went on to um, uh, change the transit guest lodging zoning permit to be a permitted use so therefore it's no longer uh, requires a conditional use application form so we created a permit form uh, for transit guest lodging and this uh, is going to be filled out by people who are operating transit guest lodging up here in the village and uh, what it needs now is a recommendation for a um, exhibit I think I put it in there as an exhibit uh, B which is appendix A in the fee schedule in the zoning a portion of the code um, which we requires that we create a transit guest lodging permit fee um, I talked with uh, Melissa Dodd and she and I, we kind of decided, well, it's like $15 for an accessory structure permit, it's $35 for like a single family home. Um, this uh, permit is going to be handled not only by me, but also by uh, Melissa Dodd as the finance director um, with collecting of the tax. So we came up with the fee of $25. And I'm asking for uh, approval. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Denise about this? And the definition of transient guest lodging is less than 30 days? Less than 30 days, yes. So when council passed this, did they talk about a fee or did you talk about a fee at that point? No, I'm taking it to council next. Okay. I was going to ask if there were any other fees for permitted uses, but there are a bunch, aren't there? Yeah, this was this really didn't fall under um, anything that we had, so <laughs> I looked at that first. But okay, it's kind of a unique permit. 
Any other questions for Denise? Okay, if not, I'll open the public hearing. So the public hearing, if you have anything to say about this inclusion of this fee for the transit guest lodging permit, um, step forward, identify yourself, um, let us know what you think. Don't all rush at once. Uh, okay, so I'll take that that there's no public comment on this uh, this uh, modification to the fee schedule. So I'll close the public hearing. Um, um, you want to add something? The only thing I wanted to add is uh, what follow up with what Jerry said is that it is now on the website, so you can actually do an online application. Um, how which can then be submitted online. And then what will happen is once um, I've reviewed that, uh, I'll contact you and, and then we'll issue the permit and, and the fee. The problem has been I've had some calls from people, but because we don't have the fee yet, I'm kind of having people just wait a little bit and you can go ahead and fill out the permit, but we're not actually issuing the permit till we establish this fee. So that will happen at the next council meeting. Anything else for Denise? Why, why are you waiting if there is no fee right now? Shouldn't it be? There is no, there is no nothing. I mean, we don't. There's nothing. There isn't an application yet. There's the application that I have. It has been approved. I need to go, but I want to go to council with it too. Okay. Um, and, but I don't, there is not any category for it. Okay. So. So council just said it's conditional with an application. It's, there's no condition or it's with, permitted. that it's, it's permitted a permit. mm -hmm. with an application and a fee, but they didn't state a fee. But there's no fee been established yet. Okay, but they did establish that there would be a fee, just not what it was. I don't think there was a discussion about no. it at no, all. No, I think no, that it that you know the discussion has primarily <laughs> been around the process and and the the permit and the um, frequently asked questions that people are going to come up with and the and how they're going to file but we have tax but as far as actually having a fee established but we haven't um, given any permits yet no okay but people have been applying but people we have been asking questions okay yes. mm -hmm. so, so uh, a one-time fee application? yes okay. yes I think the fee is very reasonable and it makes sense to be doing it. Yeah. Thank you. And, and to answer Rose's question, it's been somewhat of a process. And okay. to me, this is the last phase in, in that process of uh, council approving the, the application and the fee. And then. And I don't want to really say yeah. it was overlooked. It was more just hadn't, hadn't been brought to that point yet as things were getting pulled together. So this is kind of like the very final thing that needs to be done. From, from the permitting side. Any other questions? If not, we have a motion to accept this text amendment and forward it to council. So moved. Second. Do you want to take the roll? You are moving to approve a transient guest lodging permit fee in the amount of $25 as, as that is the te a text amendment to add transient guest lodging permit fee of $25. Correct. Correct. I thought I heard that. Yeah. And you seconded? <clears throat> okay. Uh, Reed? Yes. Sims? Yes. Stiles? Yes. Holzell? Yes. Doden? Yes. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so the next item is the conditional use application and site plan review for the uh, Yale Springs Brewery to establish a brew pub on uh, at 1475 Xenia Avenue. Um, we have some new drawings as well that were not in our packet. Um, Denise, do you want to start this conversation? And again, like before, we're going to start with Denise, then we're going to hear from the applicant, whether you want Ted to talk or one of you guys want to get up. Uh, then we'll have a public hearing, so anyone who wants to comment uh, on this uh, will have that opportunity as well. 
But first, we'll start with Denise. I'll just g give a general overview. Um, <clears throat> this is, uh, I received a conditional use application for the purpose, as you said, of establishing a brew pub. And this is going to be a um, building for private events. Uh, and then a retail area for merchandise of goods and product. Um, there'll be a section uh, for uh, the actual manufacturing of the craft beers and a, as well as a section for cold storage. Um, there is also part of this a outdoor patio area and I think you could possibly see from the rendering there's a stair tower that goes along the south side of the building up to the to the uh, porch area as well as if, if there's another drawing that shows the uh, stairs from the side view on the south side of the building where the open fire pit is and you can see that's gated. I took the zoning code um, and this, this establishment is a uh, conditional use uh, as uh, for we can that is per permitted as a conditional use for a brew pub in B2. Um, I took the um, the site and I went ahead and I applied um, the uh, setback sites uh, understanding though that this is not a new construction this is an existing building so some of these things are grandfathered in because the building has been there long before the new zoning code was updated in 2013. Um, that being said, the, uh, there is an addition on it, so there is a section in the zoning code that allows you to um, build along the same plane uh, for the addition uh, if, the, uh, if the setback is 50% or less uh, of the requirement. The setback requirement for the frontage on that is 30 feet. And this, uh, and this actual building is 15 feet, so it was exactly at 50 percent. So, so that again is also allowed for the uh, expansion of the addition. It's not. It's not. It's along the same plane. It's it's following the eaves of the original uh, building. Um, so, further on, examined. Um, the parking requirements, which we'll need to have a little bit more discussion on because, uh, you know, we, it's kind of hard to evaluate. There's a lot of different locations uh, when you add the outdoor patio areas, but then again, um, and we'll have to hear from the applicant, <coughs> if, if you're following what the occupancy requirement is for the brew pub, then they have plenty of parking spaces. If you're not if you're fall if this is if this is going to be brew pub plus it can also have additional people in other locations then that might change that but it, it definitely goes above that and I and I figured those different scenarios into this can I ask a question now mm -hmm. so because I know you had several different things about parking and mm -hmm. the higher one was 70 mm -hmm. so that was that calculating that was all the space all, that was taking in the fire pit area sure. dimensions the uh, up the rooftop patio and the brew pub itself. Okay. Yes, and and that may that may not be the case. I mean, my understanding is you're going to have this event at the brew pub, and then people can transition to these other locations. It's not going to be like I'm um, jamming into the brew pub and then oh, I got to go outside because there's no room in the brew pub. Kind so of they're going to limit the number of people that would be. We need to ask that question. Okay. And um, I also put information in here on the noise uh, levels that are required against a residential area. This, um, there is a residential district that abuts this property. Uh, there is an alleyway in between that of about 38 feet. So most of the activities as far as people and outside are closer to the Xenia Avenue location. They are not at the back of the property where the residential area is, but we also want to talk about that. Um, also, the, uh, there's going to be two coolers that are going to be placed on the outside, and you know we want to ask about that as well as far as noise. Um, and I think those were probably my biggest concerns. Um, 
Do we know where the coolers are going to be at this point? They are on the south side. In their, they're going to sit in between. <clears throat> in between, there's a, uh, a loading area on the south side. And there will be a place on both sides of that. Um, so in this drawing, sort of like right in front of where the Prius is, where those white patios are, is that where the coolers are? It's going? on the other side of that. Oh, there's one there and there's one. On see, the see that? See the the drive that goes all the way. Yeah. The black area that goes all the way up to the uh, door there. Yeah. The door on both sides of that. Yeah. So in front of the Prius and then on the other side of the yes, driveway. Yes, correct. And um, the car. The storm soil design. I just want to talk a little bit more about that. Making sure the volume size is okay. Sure. Um, this is, you know, typically you have a, a site plan review. Um, I didn't feel it was necessary to have like a full storm water plant management plan for this because it's an existing site. And there, the only thing is this addition that's being added onto it. And the addition that's being added onto it is. Um, impervious surface just like what was there before so the whole property is pretty much asphalt or building already already mm -hmm. okay any other questions for Denise right now and if not to Lisa or Ted or Nate good evening everybody thank you for hearing us tonight uh, my name is Ted Donnell. I'm the architect of the project, and I represent the, the brewery in this application. Um, to kind of just clarify a couple things that Denise had brought up, this is, in fact, a 100% non-pervious paved area now. The entire lot is. Um, there is a lot directly to the south of this that's 50 foot wide that presently Village Automotive owns. Um, there's negotiations going on now to purchase that. There is a purchase agreement in hand uh, to purchase that lot and that is included. Um, the biggest change I think that we would be making to the lot is moving the curb cut from its present location down to uh, closer to the south end. Uh, the purpose of doing that is to get the car entry more away from the building and allow semi-trucks to pull into the lot. Uh, be able to maneuver back up into the loading dock or the overhead door area and then um, egress out during daytime hours. <clears throat> In addition, what that will do is it will give us the ability to expand that existing swale that serves as two stormwater detention areas into one so that all the stormwater that goes from this particular site to that one swale uh, can be managed as it is now and improved a little bit. Um, but I have never seen or there's been no record of anything in that um, where there's been stormwater backup or issues relative to flooding because of the site as it exists now. Um, all the downspouts and everything will be tied into that basin uh, via some other ways of getting downspouts into that basin. Um, what we're adding to the site, we, we were here uh, maybe a year and a half ago when the brewery just purchased this property. Um, we applied for an application to make this a, a storage facility along with a corporate office. Um, since that time, things have changed with respects to the brewery. Uh, and mostly it, it evolves around the fact that the tap room as it exists has events going on, private events going on so frequently and it's becoming more and more popular to do that. And it's starting to really interfere with the function of the tap room. And so you've got folks that are using this event place in the tap room and patrons that come in just to drink and taste the beer and do whatever and it's becoming a big burden and it's overpopulating that space. Um, since this opportunity came up with this building, it seemed like a really good fit to be able to have these private events in this space. So it's being called uh, YSP private party. Um, that is not to say that in the event, um, in the future, if something were to happen to Millworks, that this would not become a tap room and um, replace that if something were to ever happen. Um, certainly it doesn't have any bearing as far as we are concerned on our hours or anything like that. It's still gonna be 
considered a brew house, um, a brew pub. Um, all the beer is made on on site. It's sold on site. Uh, that is permitted by the liquor law, um, and it's an extension of the same license that they have down here. Um, as far as occupancy that you raised, um, the, the occupancy of the building is based on the Ohio Building Code. Um, so parking is, uh, there's a provision in our code that talks about being able to base parking based on Ohio Building Code maximum occupancies, and that's how this was determined in my numbers. Um, the, when it came to the patio and the deck, that's actually accessory to the in-house what we consider to be the in-house brewery area. And so it's just an extension of that space outside. Um, you know, and how that's figured is, you know, the total occupancy on that roof is 49 uh, by code because we only have one means of egress. It can't structurally take a lot more than that anyway. So, you know, we're limited on our population in the building. Um, so what's the limit, you would you say? What's the, what? what's the limit that you've, what's the number that you based your parking space calculations on? Um, it's based on loose tables and chairs, one occupant for every 15 square feet or something like that of usable floor area. So what's what, the head count? What is the number? The, the head count was, I think, 100, 110 for the brew pub. Okay. 49 would be for the upstairs and the retail space as a walk-in. So it'd be, I don't know, like three or four, not very many, three or four employees, four employees, I think. Um, other than that, I think, you know, I'd reserve the right to come back and answer questions. You know, I'm sure there'll be questions, but it's a lot easier to answer questions than to throw it all out there once. We're excited about it. We think it's a perfect fit for the B2 district. You know, it's really going to upgrade that neighborhood. It's a... Uh, you know, the, in the zoning code rewrite, we actually had an overlay district for that district so that we could try to do things and give us more tools to promote that district as a B2 district. And I think this is the, my goodness, this could be a good catalyst to get things going up there. You know, I wish the Mexican restaurant had, you know, six more months or whatever to maybe piggyback off of some of the stuff that was going on here, but it would definitely help you know, any restaurant, it's going to help the bank, it's going to help YSI, it's going to help all the businesses down there. So, unless you have any specific questions. Yeah, anybody have questions for Ted? Yeah, yeah I do. Um, I heard you say that um, the uh, Ohio Code determines how many people can be on the rooftop and so forth. Yes. Uh, given that there's been, you know, news lately of overcrowding and, and sites, say, similar to this and so forth. Uh, how, how do they plan on controlling the number of people that may be on I mean, the they'll control it by, simply by headcount. You okay. know, I mean, if it looks like there's too many people gathering up there, they've got to do a headcount and get them off. I mean, that's a management thing. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and in fact, in any, just like the inside, if there's, every time you walk into a restaurant or any assembly space, there's a maximum occupancy posted sign. Um, you know, and just no different than here. There's one, you know, maximum allowable occupancy, 60 people in here. And, and my, my other question is, I was trying to find, I, I saw the, the entrance to it, uh, but I was trying to find another exit. Um, it's on the north side. Um, that drawing, we've actually revised the floor plan a little bit, but there's a, an entry to the north side that goes into the village automotive site. Okay. It, is that through the warehouse or is that? No, it's actually now through the, uh, the actual brew pub okay. in the newer plan. Okay. I'm going to ask a couple questions and are you done? Okay, so with occupancy, get back there. So you said it was 110 for, but you were also counting 49 on the roof. So is that how you were calculating how many parking spaces using what it is, um, 159 yes. as occupancy? Okay. Yeah, we figured the the brew pub, which is usable floor area, 
of 1,655 square feet at one per 15, which gives us that 110 number, um, which is 37, I think, spaces required. You know, the, the total lot has 48. Okay. So the calculations that I did were under that number, you know, doing it de several different ways, but mostly it fit under that 46, I think, was the biggest one I came up with. I also wanted to ask about the lights um, because I know that that's been an issue for neighbors and so what are you going to do about the lights? Are they going to be ones that are directed? Um, we have no plans to add any parking lot light. There's an existing street light that lights up the parking lot adequately. Um, the patio area is going to have lights on the building to direct people to the front end of the area and that's it. But we did, there are plenty of light out there okay. to not need to add additional sight lines. Thank you. Any more questions for Ted? There, there was a, um, and, and I think with this, this design here, it answers that, that question. Uh, I think one of the, Folks that were opposed to it was concerned about patio noise, and uh, but I'm assuming that might have been when the patio was going to be on. Yeah, the patio down below is is really like a meet and greet area. I mean, you know, it's just a place for folks to kind of get out of the building for a little bit. It's very small, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, really small. Um, that's why the upper deck works. Um, as far as sound goes on the upper deck, there's the way the roof is now, it comes down and it, it hits a flat roof. The metal roof hits a flat roof. And that is, it's been a problem since the building was built. So there's water leakage, there's some, you know, building damage and roof damage as a result of that. So a way to get around that is to, what we proposed is to pop up a center section of that and then create a cricket for that old existing roof to be able to go divert to the sides. And that extension of that building height is actually a very good buffer for the the deck as a sound buffer to the resident behind so you know you can see that in the renderings real well the, yeah you know you, it really does have something that you know would take that sound but you know and, and the sound for conversation is 60 decibels and sound for automobiles is 65 to 85 and you know, motorcycles 100. so there's nothing that this establishment could do that would out would make more noise than the traffic that's already on 68. Um, so having to, you know, buffer it is, you know, our position is simple that we would live within the noise ordinance in terms of decibel level. If a resident has a problem just like they're doing now, if there's a problem with sound, you know, call the police, the police will come down and everybody will get shut down. And, um, you know, the brewery has been very, very, very responsive uh, to any kinds of complaints. They've had two in five years. So, you know, it's respectful clientele that goes in. And it's a little different too. I mean, it, you know, we designed the atmosphere. The atmosphere of the brewery is a social gathering place. It's not a sports bar. There's, you know, no TVs in the brewery. It's about, you know, socializing and, and doing things that are relative to a tap room. And this is an extension of that same thing. You know, the events are Euchre night, you know. I mean, it's, um. Is it, uh, are there any thoughts about it being a, like, a music venue? If it were, um, if there was a band in there, it would be for, um, an event. You mm -hmm. know, if somebody had a wedding, yeah, they might very well have a band in there. But that would be inside. There isn't any place to put a band on the outside. And still get parking. So there's never an intent to have, there will be no band on the roof. Okay. I guarantee you that. <laughs> um, have you talked about hours yet? Uh, we Can listed the hours yep. in the application. I had a qu question. Denise, uh, Rose reiterated those as well, I believe. Yeah, just, you know, for everyone, for, for record. <clears throat> I 
It's just on the second page. Yeah, it is on the second page. So you're Monday through Thursday, 5 to 11 p.m. Friday, 3 to midnight. Saturday, 12 to midnight, noon to midnight, and then Sunday, noon to 10. How do those differ from the existing, the, uh, at... No works. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lisa Walters. Um, our current hours at Millworks are Monday through Friday, 3 to 10, Saturday, 1 to 10, and Sunday, 1 to 8. And I would like to point out that those, these are hours that we believe most of our private event uh, requests will come within. So they're not necessarily exact proposed hours, but we expect those to be what is requested. Yeah. But you don't, do you expect to have events every weekend and every day during those hours? Well, we would like to. Yeah. <laughs> um, we would like to be open as often as possible. Um, we don't really know what will exactly happen. So I, I really can't answer honestly, but we would like to. Okay. I just had a qu question about the hours because I really support what you're doing and I think it's just a wonderful addition. Um, but I wondered since the Sunday hours are noon to 10 mm -hmm. and it is the, because there was one family that wrote a letter to us and they're concerned about the sound and I can sort of understand that because that's a time when although hopefully the sound will not be going to the residents, we don't really know for sure at this point. Mm -hmm. And so during the week is when kids are going to sleep for school and parents for work. So I wondered if the Monday through Thursday, if you could try to have it 5 to 10 so that it would make it more in line with like the Sunday time that it's just a little bit more reasonable. Um, certainly a possibility. Um, I, uh, my request, or our request, Nate and myself, is that we would like to keep options open for folks because we don't know exactly what type of events will be coming or if, uh, you know, I can imagine sometimes folks, uh, we've had this request for a children's birthday party that could start at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, for example. Um, we just would like to leave ourselves open for the possibility. Obviously, it's not something that is going to happen every single day of every single week. I mean, it just we just don't know, but we like the possibility. The earlier I didn't have a problem with it. It was the later. Uh -huh. It was more the bedtime, so the mm -hmm. 10 p.m., trying to keep it during the week, the hours that kids are going to school. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I mean, it is a business district, right? And if you were exceeding the limit of what is allowed, someone could call and you would know then that you were exceeding the limits of what were, you know, someone could either call your business or call the police. Mm -hmm. right? If they're exceeding sound? or Yeah, exceeding sound. You know, if someone were bothered. Uh, the police carry us, they, they've got a sound meter. Mm -hmm. So if there's any kind of nuisance complaint about noise, they carry the sound meter. You know. Yeah, but Ted, I mean, they don't use that thing, and they, I mean. Well, no, they have. I mean, I, I know they have it for sound. It's I've very imperfect. Huh? It's very imperfect. Well, true. I mean, and so is the design of sound. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. you know, if, if yeah. from a from a professional point, if if. From my calculations, and the data shows that conversation, even loud conversation, is still under the limit of the noise ordinance. Sure. You yeah. know, so if if you're going down the road of we're going, we want to limit your what's permitted by the noise ordinance on your sound. I want to know how that can we can enforce that on any level, legally. Yeah. Right. It's not you know well enough designed to. I would love to figure out a way to design sounds that are lower than the ambient sounds around it to protect somebody from those sounds that we're generating. It's impossible. And so, you know, from a design point of view, it's like, wait a minute, don't ask the impossible of us right. to enforce something that's, that we can't literally do by engineering. Well, the police can't measure it really accurately. Well, you know, a car, they would pick up the sounds of the cars and the trucks, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, as much as they probably more than any kind of verbal sound. You know, bands, that's a different issue. You know, you yep. could hear a band, mm -hmm. and you know that's not the intent. It would be inside. So, yeah. 
Well, you know, there's a, so if, if this is really a concern, there's some things that we could, we could include. We could limit the hours. We could limit the hours of the deck, right? So that. And that's really what probably. Right. The outside uh, noise. I don't, I don't think. It's or you just not worry about it and see, yeah. you know. The, the, way the, the, the way the deck and so forth is designed in, in the photograph that I'm looking at, uh, there's got to be a heck of a lot of noise mm -hmm. to get to the back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's intended to be at the very, you know, it's at the very right. west side of the property, yeah. and, you so know, I, adjacent to you the know, road. I, I, I would be opposed to, to, to living in the time the uses of the deck. I think that would, that, that would kind of take care of itself given the season. Yeah. And one would think that during the, the summer months, the deck may be, you know, with an event, may be more populated. But that's when kids are out of school anyway. And, and I, I, I don't see a, a lot of folks around here that is going to want to go out on that deck uh, and... Uh, Late December, January, February, March. It's just you know, it's because no, it, you know, there's I mean, probably going to be no smoking. No. So you know, no uh, um, it'll also be you know, it's on the west side. Yeah. It's you know, getting the afternoon sun. It's going to be hot up there. So you right. Know, I mean, gee whiz, it's that's not to say it'll be hot at ten o'clock at night. But it'll, it'll be a beautiful place to watch the sunset. Right. Though. That it will. Right. But there are no plans to put. Uh, tables and umbrellas. Uh, okay. Standing room. Okay. And, and I had one last question, and it, and it had to do with, uh, and Denise, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, there is a requirement f for s some type of trees in the parking lot, or is it? Well, it's an existing parking lot. So, so we're not creating a parking out. lot. Okay, so, so they're good from that. So. They're, they're good from that. I mean, it would be nice if they could do some landscaping, which it looks like they're planning on, on doing on something at the front. Right. Yeah. But there's no, no, no. It's an existing parking lot. It, because okay. if they were completely tearing that parking lot out and redoing something different, then yes. But because they're simply just um, resurfacing and striping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of questions, Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, the outdoor coolers, mm -hmm. the noise rating on those things are fine for the... Uh... Um, right now, there's an existing cooler inside the building. Mm -hmm. There are two compressors that are outside the building right now servicing that cooler. All we're going to do is dismantle that and put it on the outside and not even move the compressors that are there now. Okay. And they're ground-mounted right by... So they're already there. They're already making yeah, noise. They're already there. Okay. And they've been there for a year. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then uh, retail hours, those will be the same as the events, or is that a... They'll be much more restricted to, you know, maybe daytime hours, um, and then during the event, we'll probably close earlier. You know, they're going to sell wares, and they'll sell beer there during the day. It'll be a drive-up kind of a thing. So you can walk in and buy a six-pack from that place instead mm -hmm. of going to the brewery? Yeah. Okay. And the hours on that are going to be the same in terms of that range of hours as you've identified? Correct. And, okay. and from a practical side, you know, during the day, there's a lot of stuff going on in just the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an employee. They're making beer. Um, right. So it tends to get busy. They, they could open that retail store earlier in the day if there's a demand for it. But usually it taps along with the events or, you know, when the tap room is open. I, I couldn't tell from the design, but how do you keep the, the the people that are coming by the beer at the retail store from going into the private event? I'm just thinking about increasing the numbers of people. Um, I mean, they could, I suspect. Um, you know, the, I don't know, they could. They could. You know, I don't know why not. But, you know, an event's an event. If you are unwelcome, you're unwelcome, but if it ever were to turn into just a strictly brew house, you know, then it would be open to the public regardless. Right. Not that that would make, you know, that doesn't make any difference as but far you as still, population. But you still follow, like right now, um, you have an occupancy allowance for there. At that point, you just stop letting people in. Mm -hmm. Now, the way the code's written is that they want to 
convert this to a standard, just a brew house, they need to come back or not? There is no difference as far as I don't the think there is. Goes. No, no. Uh, we're at as long as you're limiting the number to be a brew house. Yeah. yeah. A brew house. Except yeah. if we put conditions on what we're allowing, that's right. right? Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah so I mean, like. Right. Your application is for a brew pub. Yes. Your application is not for a tap room. No. But if we were not to say that it is strictly not allowed to become a tap room based on this permit that we would give you, then you could do that. Is that how, how it's being thought of? No. If we, if you, a, a brew pub is a permitted use with conditions in that district. If you put on the any restrictions that prohibit it from being a brew pub. No, from being a tap room. Well, it can't be, a, it can't, a, as long as we're making beer on premise and selling beer on premise, mm -hmm. then it can be open to the public to sell that beer on premise. You're just not, Right. right now, planning yeah. on using it the way that you're using the Millworks property. That's correct, because we're trying but to you, separate But at any the time, use. no but matter what... the approval what, that they're seeking tonight would allow them to do that. Absolutely. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And that's just so, the point that I was trying to make yeah, sure that we exactly. all understood. That we're not... I mean, are there conditions that we could put on this permit, permission that we're giving, that would not allow it to change into that? I don't no. think so. So that is what we are approving right now. A it, pub, yeah. Potentially, it, yes. Potentially. Yeah, here's a scenario for you. If you did that, let's say you put a condition on this that it could not be a brew house with for like a tap room, and somebody bought Millworks and closed, and they had to be out of there in 30 days. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Are we going to go through the process of having them come back before planning commission and they can lose that potential business in town? I don't think anybody wants to go there. And so, you know, my, my opinion as a consultant to my client is you want to have permission to do what that district allows you to do, which is to have a brew house, you know, a brew pub. Ted, I don't think we can say that you can't have a brew house because right. it's already approved it's a with condition. It's a, yeah, it's a conditional yeah, use. That. Yeah, <laughs> we can't do that. Right. We, it's, it's, it's approved as a conditional use, a brew house. Yes. So. If we approve it. No, no, no we, 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 cannot, we cannot put a condition it's a on. It's permitted use. So it's a permitted use. It's yes. a permitted use, but okay. we can put conditions on. What is not, well, but I'm the condition sorry. Is, I'm, I'm, I'm the condition a cannot be, the, you can't do it. I'm I'm a little confused about the the differences between a brew house and a brew pub. Okay, because it sounded like you were using them separately. No, they're so, the same. So, or or a private event location, like the the intent presently, because yeah. of the fact that we have a tap room, which is at Millworks. <clears throat> yeah. And they are brewing there. Yeah is that there's a conflict with the clients because there's private events that are going on simultaneously with the public entering the tap room, that it's overpopulating that space and causing some real concerns for the ownership. So what they're doing with this new venue is putting it as an event space. However, there's always a, a potential that it could become nothing but, but but similar food, drink, room, entertainment, but. hospitality, brew pubs, and similar establishments, bars, taverns, restaurants serving alcoholic beverages are all conditional in this. So yeah. we, we would be allowing all of that yes. to be allowed in that location. That is, they are permitted yeah. to be in that district. Yeah. With condition. conditional. Right. Yeah. With a, so we with, can't say yeah. you can't do that because right. it's already approved. Well, I mean, if they were, can, if we approve this, are we also approving food trucks at the, that location? Uh, I'm going to talk about food trucks later. Yeah. Well, we'll but talk, let's, we'll what I'm saying is, is food it... Food trucks are not allowed in, in B2, but I need to do more research on that because I, I'm not quite sure why. It's not um, 
They're says, always conditional, right? Okay, but okay. in in B one, they're allowed. But in B two, uh, there's no. You see, there's nothing there. It's blank. Oh yeah, B two is right. blank. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to do more research on that because, um, and we've got time. I mean, they're not like opening their doors tomorrow. So. Uh, to look and see if that is actually an error in the code. I mean, we've had errors before. We had that error with the mobile food truck for educational uh, institutions. So I was going to talk about that a little later. But. Yeah, I mean, that one is a concern off you know, record from the other conversation, but if YSI wanted to have a catering food truck, they couldn't have it if, yeah. as it presently is, and that's not the intent of that district. Well, like, for example, like, are we... You know, if um, well, actually, Ted YSI could because they're industrial. We we uh, wanted yeah. if for B2. some reason B two is if not we wanted to allow you to be, be a code error a, a, mistake. a brew pub, but <clears throat> not have outdoor patio seating. Could we do that because they're separate in this? You can have outdoor patio seating in conjunction with a permitted restaurant. Okay. So if we permit the restaurant, then we're permitting outdoor patio seating. That cannot be a condition. Just, I'm, I'm sorry I'm like getting so, but like I'm trying to n negotiate the, you know, like the application is stating this is what we're going to do with it, but not really the full extent of what we're giving permission for. and. I, I'm not opposed to giving permission for all of those things because it's a, a business district and it's a business location and if you live near businesses you expect traffic and sometimes the hours are late, etc. Like if Dollar General wanted to be open 24 hours a day, could we limit that? I don't think so, right? We could. We could limit that. Would they have to come to us if they wanted to have more hours? I ha I'd honestly have to look to see if I think general if general retail is a permitted use. It is for this. Uh, it's a permitted use. It doesn't <coughs> even. It's a permitted be, use, but because it's <coughs> alcoholic beverages, we can put conditions on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, what are our limitations of what conditions based on the Concerns of your potential neighbors, right? Well, I would, I would. First off, you have to describe what the violation is in terms of an ordinance. You can't permit. You can't just say we don't want people outside our business enjoying themselves. Yeah. You have to describe what it is that they're doing that causes a nuisance, and conversation is within. From my understanding of noise, it's within the allowable decibel rating of the noise ordinance. Yeah. So if I you're don't asking, think it's yeah. If you're it's, asking an, an applicant that they have to do something that is of a higher standard because of a perceived problem that is permitted in every place else in yeah. this village except that one lot. I think you have a problem. Yeah. And that's why. I disagree with limiting it to 10 p.m. or, I mean, like, I, we, I don't know. How do you guys feel? Are we limiting well, the time? Let's, uh, any more questions for Ted? And we'll, and, okay. and then we, because we got a lot more to hear. Thank we you. have to hear from yes. all these folks. Thanks. And then we're going to come back and we can talk yeah. about okay. these things <laughs> further. So any more questions for Ted? I'll be back. You okay with this parking <laughs> questions? We'll probably have you back. <laughs> Actually, let me just say on that, that the, the calculation on the parking that you had uh, in our code, because we follow our code, is under like banquet halls, but your calculation and mine almost come out the same. Yeah, I did it. The, I mean, it was like. I did it strictly to zoning, but then yeah. when I do the, because, the, because occupancy in terms of the Ohio building code is so, so important in this particular use group, that's why I use that because mm -hmm. I want this document to follow the zoning permit when it goes to building applications. Yeah. So you're okay with this 48 spaces? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I, there, the, uh, what, uh, we have to talk about that calculation a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ted.
Okay, so we can just hold our conversation until we hear from the folks, okay? And, um, okay, um, what we'll do then is open the public hearing. If you want to comment on this application, come forward, uh, identify your folks, yourself for the folks on Channel 5, um, let us know what you think, and, uh, and then we'll go through and hear everyone who has a comment. So. And, and Matt, I'm timing to three minutes. You're timing to three minutes to begin with? Okay. Okay, so. Someone's got to start. Sure. <laughs> Never done this before, so I apologize. Um, I have a position. Your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, David Kent. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure of the, the procedure, but I, I do have a petition with some signatures from area residents uh, concerned about the noise issues. Okay. Uh, may I present that? Sure. To uh, right. Commissioner? Maybe to the clerk. So I'll, I will file that if you don't. Um, three minutes. All right. Uh, my family, we've lived on, we live on Lisa Lane. Uh, right across uh, Southgate from this uh, location. Uh, we've been there about 12 years now. Um, the neighborhood has always been very quiet uh, at night. Um, the uh, residents around the area, everybody works. They're folks with kids, families. Um, <clears throat> the um, proposed hours is, is the thing that we're most concerned about going past 10 p.m. because my understanding is that's the current village noise ordinance is at 10 o'clock. Things need to get a little more quiet sort of a thing. Um, because it's going past 10 o'clock and they're, they're pretty vague in their packet of uh, how long these things can go. It may go to 11, it may go longer if that's what the customer wants. Uh, and they talk about things like weddings, so you know, Lots of celebration, people are gonna be happy. They're gonna, uh, that sort of thing, if it goes on and on. Um, the, the reason that we're so concerned is because we do have jobs, we do have kids in school. Uh, we can't perform well. If we don't get sleep, I can't, I can't perform my job well. My kid, my child, uh, personally my child, she can't do well in school because she's tired, you know? Um, and it's not just kids are only in school in the winter. We start in August. Yellow Spring School starts in August and it goes until June. Uh, there's still quite a bit of, of nice weather and things. Uh, so folks are gonna be out. Again, they're gonna enjoy the weather. It's not gonna be hot out. It's perfect weather to sit out on the patio, have a few beers and things. Um, unfortunately, it only takes one person to really create a noise issue meaning shouting, singing, really getting into it. And we're, they're talking about large groups of people, 110 people, uh, granted 49 on the rooftop, some out on the patio. I don't know how many fit on that patio. Um, but that's a lot of people outside. They're drinking as the night goes on. We all know what that's like. You get louder and louder, people can shout. My biggest concern is that patio, um, the see how it points it's going to collect it's like a u shape and it's pointing back where those two cement pads are those are the residences that it's pointing right at it's going to collect all that sound from the patio and broadcast it right back into those residences and things and i can tell you uh, at our our house both of our bedroom windows uh face directly onto that property and when there's folks out there talking, I'm not gonna get into the debate of, of how loud people can get, but when there's people talking, you can hear it right through that window. And in the summertime, a lot of times you wanna have the windows open at night because it cools your house down. You can't afford to run AC all the time. And now you can't do that. And also it sounds like the, the burden of keeping, these, keeping the brewery customers quiet now falls on us as citizens nearby. Uh, if they get too rowdy, we call the police. 
you know, so we have to we have to take care of the problem, sort of a thing, instead of the brewery policing things. So I strongly uh, hope that that council, or I'm sorry, commission, the planning commission, will consider limiting to the same hours that they have at Millworks. It sounds like they're doing great with the hours that they have right now. They've exceeded capacity with the hours they have right now up until 10 o'clock. Why do we need to be treated differently on the south end of town than the folks in the north end of town? Why are they limited to 10 o'clock at north and not down south? Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Oops. I'm Sally Malone. I live at 120 Lisa Lane. Um, two houses from Southgate, which is across from the apartments. And I don't believe any of the apartments got a letter. I believe their landlord got a letter. That's probably because true. Because I talked to some of the people that lived in the apartments and nobody got a letter. Only property owners. Okay. That's and why. if the property owners don't share it are. with the tenants, that's too bad. Yeah, right? I mean, because I don't know who okay. the renters are. Because they're really the ones. I'm all for this. I think this is wonderful. I live on this. I worked at that bowling alley, okay? But I'm not for the outdoor patio either because I know how many. You get 49 people on a patio at a wedding or a class reunion. You're going to have a lot of noise. We live in a really quiet neighborhood. I grew up in that neighborhood, moved away, came back. And it's a nice neighborhood. Some of the people, I'm 60, some of the people that when I was seven years old still live in that neighborhood. They, they still live there. And um, I just, I'm all for having weddings and receptions there. But 50 people, 49 people on there. I think is extreme staying open till midnight when we do work and some of us do work weekends and some of us do you know kids go to school and my other question is you have 110 people allowed inside and 49 up on the patio is that correct so it's 159 people here you only have room for 48 parking spaces Where's the other people going to park at Village Automotive? At the dollar store? Most people go by themselves or with their spouse. Xenia Avenue, is everyone going to park on Xenia Avenue? Are they going to park on Southgate or at the doctor's office? That's a lot of people in the bowling alley for 48 spaces, 159 people. So I'd like for you to think about that. Oh, and my other question is, with the parking spaces here, where are they going to put the food trucks if they're allowed in, which I'm sure they will be allowed in? Where are the food trucks going to go? Are they going to take up these parking spaces, which means now there's only 40 parking spaces or 30 parking spaces because of food trucks? And food trucks are rather large. So that's just another question I had. And I see that they are going to put fencing up. I am assuming that goes into this, where we are to the east of it. Are they going to put a big fence up? Or are people going to be able to walk down the alley and just walk over there? Or Yeah, I don't think the plan shows fencing between okay. the parking lot and the alley. But these are just things that we live, I live two houses from Southgate, which right across, you know, that I have questions, you know, about, you know, how many people will be outside, how many people will be on the patio. They said it's completely non-smoking, so where are the smokers going to go? They're going to go in the alley. They're going to go on 68. If there's no smoking, there's always smokers, and they're going to go somewhere. If they're not allowed to be on that area, where are they going to go? That's all mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello. 
I'm Gary Bayard. I live across the street from the Bowling Alley. Uh, we've been there for about 20 years now. Uh, my wife and I both work at the base. We get up at 4.30 in the morning, feed our animals. So we're early risers. Uh, we've been there through the entire time that the sports bar, center, whatever you want to call it, was there. And there was a little bit of noise, but not nearly as much noise as there used to be from the IGA, trucks coming in and doing things. And because of the way our house is situated, it sits up on a hill, so all the sound travels up. The same with Dollar General now. However, all the time that the sports bar was there, and there had been some big parties, some bands and so forth there, we never had an issue with noise. I mean, just as you said, there were more loud trucks downshifting coming down 68 into Yellow Springs, and there's an awful lot of noise. Miami Township rescue folks coming through with their sirens going, a lot of noise. People always leaving town, gunning it, whether it's motorcycles, vehicles, or whatever, a lot of noise. There's just a lot of noise out there anyway. With the rooftop uh, section, I don't see that uh, as much of a problem as again, you know, there's gonna be conversation up there. Someone mentioned the fact that people at, at the uh, current tap house are very respectful, and they are. People are enjoying themselves, they laugh a little bit, but there's no one yelling and screaming. It's not a crazy wild time. It's not that kind of establishment. And I think because of the way the new design is, I think it is gonna muffle a lot of the noise going towards the back. Uh, my daughter used to live in the apartments right behind the bowling alley when the actual sports bar was there. And we've been over there quite a few times in the evenings when the, when the sports bar had uh, bands and so forth. There was some noise. Of course, there's going to be noise. You've got vehicles coming in and out, people coming in, getting in the vehicles and leaving and arriving and so forth. So all in all, I think it's going to be a very good thing for the village to have this. Thanks. Anyone else? Sure. Again, I'm Sally Malone, 120 Lisa Lane. I have a question. We voted when the Mexican restaurant came in. We voted on that into town for it. Or oh, will we license. vote on this? Will this be up for a vote for the our section where we are? We vote. And also another question I have is about liquor. Is it strictly beer? Or are they going to be able to, if a wedding party wants to get married, are they going to be able to bring liquor in? I mean, I don't know. You know, my daughter's getting married next fall in the venue. They had to get special permission up in Cleveland to get liquor, but they were allowed to. So will they be allowed to if a class reunion wants to have liquor? I don't know. Yeah. We can ask Ted that question. <coughs> Um, the liquor license that they have now allows you to serve only things, only beer that you make on site, period, end of story. Um, in the long term, if the venue looks like there is a potential to house um, other events or clientele that would allow other liquors to be included under that license, that would have to go before the vote. I have to go for the voters in the yes. precinct? In that precinct, yes. Okay. Because that's but what we voted for for the Mexican restaurant. We voted for the <coughs> liquor license. Yes. Yeah. But this is strictly for anything that only things that you make on site you're allowed to consume. Period. Okay. So if there's a wedding that wants other things, they're not going to get them. They can drink beer. Okay. Um, relative to, I'd like to clarify a couple things if I could. Um, we do believe that this would be um, somewhat of a destination for walkability. Uh, we think that folks from YSI or other places that would want to use the venue would actually walk there. Uh, we don't think that parking is anywhere close to being an issue. We still think that we have more than what we need. Uh, there is a location of, for the food truck. On that rendering, it would be um, right in front of those pine trees or on the parking lot side of those pine trees, the driveway there is wide enough to accommodate that food truck on that location. Uh, there is a smoker's area designated, which is uh, where the bike racks are, uh, similar to the way it is now over there. So um, the bike racks are between the cooler. patio and the cooler. Yes. So they would be separated from the alley by the, those two yes. coolers. Yes. 
Um, in terms of sound collecting and generating from the patio area, uh, the rendering is kind of hard to see, but that gray stuff below is stone and it's very dense and it's, it's really a great sound deflector and it's lined on the inside of that courtyard along with corrugated metal. Uh, corrugated metal doesn't reflect sound because it's corrugated. It'll just break it all up. Well, I think uh, also, Ted, the concern was like to the uh, east, though, where I think you just show. Yeah, the the coolers are actually going to stop. I mean, they can would. Can we look at the? Can you bring up the picture that's like into the ground floor patio? There was a rendering of that yeah. one. So yeah, the where the end of the Prius is, or the the actually the tongue to the handicap spot there, that's where the cooler is going to stop. And, and between the yellow fence and the big cooler that's going to be in front of that car yes. would be the smoking Smoker area. Yes, yeah. along with a bike corral. Um, I think that was about everything that I caught. But it's okay, thanks. Uh, anyone else would like to uh, comment? Can I ask one other question? Sure. <clears throat> Uh, and it's probably the architect or uh, David Kent. Yeah. Um, that cooler, when I looked at the blueprint, it looks like the cooler is not attached, not attached to the building. Is that correct, or is it attached? No, it's not. So there's a gap between the cooler. So when somebody's leaning up against the side of the building smoking, there's actually a gap, right? Yeah, there's the uh, foot. Or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. But is there any way to to request that a, a fence on that bat, on that eastern between you know where the alley is and the edge of your property? Is there any way to put a sound barrier there or something? Uh, it wouldn't be effective as a sound barrier. Or or even just as a a deterrent. For well, folks it's a it's wandering? a public alley. Okay, so that's that means no. I don't think you can I mean, blo you can't block it. Yeah. But well, because oh, there's, no there's a scrap yard right there, you know, on the corner of... Oh, yeah. And that's got a fence that runs the whole yeah. way. Yeah, there's no fence. So uh, that's why I'm No, asking. I mean, you, you, you could, but to deter people from using a public alley to um, access... I mean, actually deterring your neighborhood from being able to access uh, well, a public... Such that uh, but, you know, private establishment yes. through that alley. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or is the yeah. fence more for sound barrier? I was just thinking, again, for just for sound. Okay. But as it sounded like you said, that's not going to be effective. But is there is there a way to put something closer up or anything? Or to fill that gap? Or I mean, I, from, I'm sorry. But uh, from, I, a, thank you. Um, from an architectural point of view, the, I see the sound generator as being up on top if it's any place, and popping the building up really helps. I mean, you can see from oh, that rendering, it, it's blocked as much as possible. The other side, I think that the coolers and the cars really create a buffer as much as any fence would. You know, the one thing I will say about a fence in an alley is any time that you restrict eyesight for safety reasons, you increase problems. You know, so visibility uh, through things from alley to open space really brings down crime or brings down anything that people are being there back there smoking or whatever. They're just not going to because they're visible. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, with that, we'll close the public hearing, return the discussion back up here. I have a question, I guess, for Denise. Is there a um, curfew or whatever on sound in the downtown area? There's just a curfew in general. It's, at, um, <clears throat> it's not a curfew, it's a, it's a decibel. And what, and what time is that? Um, after 10 o'clock, so it would go from, um, let's see, well actually, yeah, receiving property is the residential. So it goes from 65 during daytime hours, which is considered 7 o'clock in the morning to 10 at night. And then after 10 o'clock until 7 in the morning, it goes down to 45 decibels. 
Okay. And would it be the same for this area? Yeah, because what it is is it's the, the source of the noise property. is is the business district, and the recipient, the receiving property is the residential. Okay. Yeah. In this case. <coughs> Okay, so we have a lot of questions. We've had some comments. Any uh, any further discussion on what do we want to do here? Well, I have to say I haven't heard anybody not support the business. I think everybody supports it. It's just uh, there, I think there are some neighbors in the residential area who have some concerns about the sound. I would agree with that. And possibly about the parking. But the number of spaces they have, 48, are, meets what our requirements are. So we really can't, is that correct? And so well, we really I can't mean, ask you know, it's, um, for more. There's two ways. You know, Ted figured it one way, I figured it another way, and really, when it came down to the brew pub area, um, when in our code, when I figured it by 50 uh, square feet per, I came up with 33 spaces, and he came up with 37 mm -hmm. by using occupancy. But um, with the patio area, um, I came up with 20 because I went on that 1,000 square feet. Uh, dividing in by 50 square feet and his was 17 so his was a little bit lower the I think the question becomes whether or not you're going to calculate in the other area which is kind of the pass-through fire pit area where there's uh, there's not going to be like uh, is there going to be seat there seats there at the Ted at the fire pit area no so you know it's whether you want to Re, you know, require that because that would factor in another 10. Um, another 10 spaces? Mm hmm. Because that area, you know, but that you're counting in a stairwell and that whole area around there is about 500 square feet. How, how many does the bike rack take away? I, I don't, I couldn't tell from the rent. The bike rack is on it. No, how many my, were my on it? My question is, oh. you know, there, there's a bike rack, so. Do we have a calculation that says for every bike space that would all set a parking space? Yeah, I mean, you can, it's not a set in stone amount, but you can just subjectively take away take based away. on bike racks. Okay. Yeah, we have the and, and that could be the same for people walking up. Sure. Mm -hmm. We could take away. Mm -hmm. What kind of shape is the sidewalk here along? I would just put a new one in there. That's just a little asphalt thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the, the sidewalk is new. We're replacing, We're replacing the But you're replacing the bike path asphalt one. Is that what you're doing? Right. Okay. Because there's another sidewalk that the village just did that was separate from the bike path sidewalk. But they, right? it, it didn't not. extend no? all that way. Oh, it nope. didn't go that far? No. Nope. Okay. okay. Where does it end? I know it, I know it went as far as Allen, so exactly. that's all, that's all it went. Just oh, Allen. Okay. okay. So. That's not to say that the village couldn't in the future decide to do something. Yeah. But, but again, you know, if we're looking just in front of the establishment, they're putting in a new sidewalk. So uh, I, I personally, I, you know, we're, uh, I'm satisfied with, with the parking plus bike bike ramp uh, and walkability, that uh, I, w I would not have a problem voting for a. Uh, okay. Is there going to be parking available on the other side of the building? On the. Not that they're planning on. No, okay. not now. You know, it could be in the future. You have an ingress, egress uh, easement for that, right? Okay, so are we okay with the bikes and the parking, Susan? I'm okay with it, yes. How about you, Rose? Yeah, I feel comfortable with the parking being um, okay. 
48 spaces yeah. and bike. With the bike, right. bike and Okay. And well, that's not us giving them any leniency, it's just allowed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it, yeah. it's what's well, there's required. Some, there's some different ways of calculating yeah. it and yeah. do you include the patio or not. Mm -hmm. But if we're okay with that, then that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. So the other question then is are, what about the hours? See, I'm going to have to say I'm leaning towards, and I don't know if we can say, because I guess I see that there might be an event during the week that somebody wants to have it later than 10. I would rather, if that were going to happen, that it would be occasional and that they try to encourage the people who want to use it, well, you know, these are the hours that we like to have it during the week at uh, 10 p.m., the limit, because I, I understand the concerns of the families. Uh, I lived in an area near Antioch for quite a while, and you know, and that's different. It's a campus, uh, but it was when uh, many more students, and there was always a sound problem. And when there always is a sound problem, they, you're absolutely right. The burden falls to the neighbors to call. Well, it's quite burdensome to have to call all the time. And maybe you decide with your neighbors, you talk, well, you're going to call one day, you're going to call the next. But it's just, you know, it, it's sort of beyond that. You'd rather. We are the planning commission, so it's nice to plan for these things ahead of time and not to wait until, you know, and if we see it's not an issue, perhaps then we could say, okay, you know, it could be, they could be open later. But that's my concern, is, is the sound. Yep, okay. M my take on this is that the number number of events that I've attended here around town and uh, since uh, 1965, they normally don't run up to the time that it's to get over with and people start to leave. Um, people start filling out about an hour before, sometimes up to half an hour, and, and then they start filtering out. Uh, there are very few events that I've attended here in, in the town over the years that I've been here that everybody waits till the witching hour to leave. And uh, so uh, I'm inclined to say with at least the events that I've attended down at, uh, down at the, the brewery, um, they do come around well before they're closing to say the last call for this, the last call for that. And, and I think that uh, they would handle the party house the, the same way of, of getting folks a, a heads up. And, and there's two things, it's for their safety and for their time to, to, to clean up. Uh, that uh, I don't think we're, we're gonna need, you know, these are proposed times and uh, I think if, if anything, the proposed times would, would, would come down if, if they just see that uh, on certain days they don't have a, a lot of activity and so forth. So I, 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 I'm, I'm comfortable with the uh, hours that they propose. Okay. Rose? What do you think? I think um, I'm kind of leaning towards where Susan is. I think during the week we should limit to 10 o'clock. Midnight on the weekends. I mean, it's not really what anybody wants. Um, but, and I think then if there's not a issue and um, the residents see there's not an issue, then they can come back and say, can we want to extend this time to 11 or midnight? Mm -hmm. So is the issue with the noise in general or the noise from the outdoor patio areas? I'd just like to limit it just for the folks who live in the neighborhood. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Just the I'm, hours. I'm wondering if it was limiting, if you limited the hour, hours. Oh, like oh the outdoor hours. Like the outdoor. Like close the, the patio. The patio closes at a certain time. Uh, then there are, then you've got to, then you're kind of putting a burden back on them to figure out how they operate their business in a way that's, what, that's that not, that. does... I, mean, I don't know how you would stop that. You have the doors right there. I don't know. Do you want to comment no, on that? Are we, are we, are we comment on the hour? Sure. Yep. Over Please here. do. Um, I would just like to uh, mention or point out that right now, 
uh, where we're located in Millworks, um, the hours by uh, Planning Commission are actually, uh, we believe it's midnight every single day. We choose to close at 10 because that suits our lifestyle. <laughs> um, we don't necessarily want to change our lifestyle. We just, you know, with this opening of this new location, we simply want to be able to have options if it is requested, and we choose to. Um, also, I would like to point out that we, Nate and I, live on Brookside Drive, which is right in that neighborhood. So we are very sensitive to what it goes on there. I mean, it is our neighborhood as well. So just wanted to mention that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Back to you, Rose. Um, so do we know if that's true? I don't have that information. Then. I think okay. it might be midnight, actually. I mean, the we'll have to conditional the use for the up. brewery, mm -hmm. because I I feel very uncomfortable um, restricting it more than what we've already restricted it there. You would like to leave it as proposed? I not yeah yes I would be um, because of. Because of how the property is zoned, I don't think that it's going to be open until 11 every day of the week. And I, I think that if it was a roller skating rink or a bowling alley, I don't know if in, that served alcohol. I don't know if we would. It just. It's a business district, I guess. Is. I yeah. I don't I don't know if the addition of beer really creates more noise than if it there wasn't yeah. alcohol okay. there. Okay. Well, what do you think, Susan? Well, I guess I'm sort of sticking with what I I said, uh, because you talk about alcohol. I do know from I have friends that live in the business or near the business area in Yellow Springs. And the bars do create problems, and they talk about it. Um, you know, they're not complaining, but they talk about it. Uh, that there are businesses that stay open, and it, it, and it is a problem. Uh, now, you know, they live near that business area, um, and the bar was there when they you know, purchase their property and that, and so, so they live with it. So I think when alcohol is involved, yes, voices do tend to get louder, or can, not always, but I think that they can. Uh, people get excited, happy, laugh, <laughs> talk loud. We've all been places where that happens, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen every time, but it just seems like it would be nice during the week to be considerate of kids and working folks. What's that? It's 10 a.m. to midnight. 10 a.m. to midnight? Okay. 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. to midnight. Yeah. Yes. I've been here sitting very quietly listening to it all. Can, Can you, you come, come up, up and. I'd like to make a couple comments if I could. Thanks, Bob Baldwin. I ran the Ford dealership next door to the north for 18 years. My used cars kept denting the south. The north end of the bowling alley because there were no parking blocks. And Camilla Harris would come out and cuss me out and say, Baldwin, quit denting my building. I said, Camilla, when you're ready to sell, I'll buy it. And after four more years, she said, I'm tired of stale coffee and bowler's gripes. I'm getting out. So I bought the building. So I ran the Ford agency on one side. I ran the bowling alley. A bowling alley is often a recreational family operation it's not to go and get drunk or party or drink beer. What you're talking about now, and I just can't believe you're so easy to accept all this alcohol and all this good party time in residential A. Now maybe A, B, and C is a sham. I don't know, but you did it for some reason. It's a quiet residential A neighborhood if I were you, I would certainly have a two-tiered 
opening and closing limit. I'd say Monday through Thursday, you need to close down no later than nine. If you want to party on Friday and Saturday, I think that community can probably accept it. But you are offering the whole damn south end of town to a money-making organization. They have to do it your way. You do not have to do it their way. You have to do it for the town of Yellow Springs way. And in many respects, we have enough alcohol establishments now for the amount of people we have. At the same time, you got to remember, when I was a Ford dealer, we had 4,985 citizens in Yellow Springs. How many of you know what our population is now? It's 3,400. It has really changed. We've lost Vernet. We've lost Bookplate. Thank goodness for Antioch uh, YSI. They have stayed about 240, 260. They have built other places, but they have maintained a Yellow Springs presence. Mobine had 450. I think they're about down to 250. So Yellow Springs is changing, and maybe we do need more tourism. But we don't need the tourism to the detriment of a residential neighborhood. And that means the people on the north end of town near Dwan and Hama, they, they should have rights for noise too. And I, I'm not down there very often, so I don't know. I don't think it's been a problem. But this is a very ambitious project. But you folks have to decide what's best for the town. Not, not what's best for these investors. Thank you. Thank you. Just for clarification, and, and maybe for Bob's benefit, this, this strip along there, though, is a business district. Uh, the residential is behind it. But on Xenia Avenue, that is a business district, which is why it's a it always has been. Yeah. So you can run it as a business, but I'm just saying yes. there's some yep. limits yep. Yeah. for operation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and, and and that is, in some regard, why I think we've got to start with a 10 o'clock closing time during the week <coughs> instead of the 11, as they proposed. I know that they have different hours now, but they're in the, you know, the the wine seed facility, the the, the That's industrial, an industrial park. Industrial. <clears throat> it's an industrial park. And their neighbor is the bike path. But there's residential there, yes. There is a yeah, yeah, beyond it. And and I'm satisfied with what they proposed. <coughs> so what do you got? Stay on the air? <laughs> Maybe so. Rose, what do you think? Um, you're, you're suggesting 10? Yes. For Sunday through Thursday. Right. 10 p.m. is the... They already have 10 at Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. They're making Monday through Thursday consistent. And then what, Friday, Saturday, leaving it? Leave it alone. Yeah. Friday. Hey, Friday. Holidays? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I don't, I don't want to complicate things, but the what holidays it holidays complicates things. Holidays complicate things, but also, um, I don't know, like if a, if a wedding, right, were to go on until one o'clock on a weekday. Or not on a on a on a Saturday or a Friday. Are we encouraging, you know, once a month or once every two months or once every three months? Are we encouraging the police to come and shut down? A, well, no, a I mean I think you establish the hours, and if there's complaints, then there are complaints. Okay. What if New Year's is on a Tuesday? <laughs> Well, I have a question for Denise on that, actually, since it came up. Are they permitted to 
uh, ask for a special event permit for Fourth of July, New Year's Eve, events such as that for a later hours, is that something the village would do or would that need to be written into the conditional use permit? It would have to be written in. Okay. The special event permits are, are really for um, things public. that are going to be in the public right away. Okay. So like a street parade or something like that. Did you want to say something, Nate? Uh, yeah, Nate Cornett with Yellow Springsbury. Um, yeah, we're extremely sensitive to this, and you know, even th even though we could stay open later with our given uh, hours, we choose not to. So we're just asking for the option for the occasions. Uh, if this did turn into a you know being open seven days a week like the current location is. Uh, we would choose 10 o'clock. We don't want to stay open uh, later than that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for our employees. We, uh, and we don't want to be there and close the place down. So literally, this is just asking for, hey, if somebody wants to have a, a private event, we're sensitive to the noise issues. We live in the neighborhood. Um, we, if, if it is going to go late, we will you know, talk to the customers about it needs to stay indoors. If it's getting uh, too noisy, then you need to come inside. We do that currently at the location that we're at. And if there were ever noise issues, they would be the worst where we're at currently. This, this space faces a very, uh, a, a highway basically. So I just don't see the issues. I don't see the, the noise being an issue. And the burden falls on us. The burden falls on the, the community as well to communicate with us uh, it, you know, if there are issues, and we have always, uh, we've always worked through that with, with folks that, that are nearby. So I just wanted to add that, that last little piece there. Thanks. <clears throat> What's council going to say about this, Jerry? Yeah. The hours. The hours, and the, well, I'm going to vote yes for whatever planning brings before us, I don't, uh, I don't see it as being a, a, a big discussion issue because it's a special events. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and special events, to my definition, that's, that says that, uh, yeah, there could be a special event every night, seven days a week, but I just don't, I, I, I don't see that. But it, it, but what I do see is that we're kind of uh, helping two ends of the community because I've I've been down to uh, the other location and the last special event that I went to uh, it was noise because you had had the regulars there plus you had the special events and then people went outside. The, this is going to kind of alleviate some of the congestion that that we they, that they have now. Plus, the venue to me is big enough that uh, an average event, if I don't believe it, 150 is the average event. I, I see it being somewhat somewhat less, and also. On a lot of special events, people come and go. They, they come in, and, and if you had a special event from from five to eleven, you're gonna get crowds of people. And the eleven o'clock end of it is normally the smaller end, not not the larger end. So, uh, and, and and if if council chose to have a long discussion on that. And I was still there. I would be accepting the planning's recommendation, which I hope is the hours that they propose. If it's less, I'd accept that. Okay. Okay. Rose, what do you th think? You gonna stick with the ten? Uh. I mean, we really like we. I think even if we went back to our 
previous population, we do have a lot of, uh, we do have venues that, uh, you know, for things and multiple things happen on the weekends and it's, I think it would be rare that a 150 people would stay until one o'clock at night making a lot of noise. Well, right now it's midnight. So Mid yeah. Midnight or even Or midnight. At 11 or on even 11, I think, yep. you know, we, we don't necessarily need to think of this, of, of our job as managing a, a city of people. We really do live in a village. Um, and I think that, you know, I hope that they get enough business to stay open, as I do most businesses the Yellow Spring, the opening Yellow Springs, but I don't see it being an every, every night thing. And so I, I, would, I would like to, I'm in favor of what they proposed with, with leniency because, you know, they do say, although it could differ accordingly, I would say 12 a.m. I mean, based on, you know, complying with the maximum permissible sound levels after nine. Okay. Well, I think, I guess I'm convinced that these times are okay. I mean, I think we need to Make a recommendation to council. Well, it we need to, to we need to do that. Oh, yeah, this is it. Okay. Sorry, yeah. that's the thing. This is it. So oh, I didn't understand what you it, it's. Um, it's important that we think about all this stuff and, and hear these different opinions. Um, at the same time, we there's four of us, so um, I would like to see it at ten o'clock. But I mean, if 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 we think that uh, if you guys think that. 11 is going to work, then I guess, I guess I'll acquiesce to that. I'd prefer, I have to say, I'd still prefer it to be 10 with saying, with the caveat, that occasionally 11. But I would like to make it at 10. No, and also, you know, holidays, you know, if New Year's falls on one of those, New Year's Eve or whatever, that the occasional Time it could be over open later or on holidays. National holidays. Well, how do National we do holidays. that? We would just say that. Well, we could Monday say through Thursday, five to ten, or earlier. Five to eleven. But but if we left it like that, then the way it is now, they 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 basically have to live with the holidays. Uh, Correct. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to give him uh, a, a loophole to, to come in later because it's a holiday. Uh, yeah. No. No. I don't want to give him a loophole. Yeah. Uh, special a event. New Year's special Eve. Special event. New, New Year's Day Eve. party. No. You. You have a good time until eleven. Then you can go downtown and watch the book. The uh, ball dropping. Yeah. You know. So that's what they do. That's what everybody does now. <laughs> they, they leave their house at 10, 30, 11, and head downtown. So 11:40. I, 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 you know, to get us off the dime, I like to make a motion that uh, we accept the uh, the proposal as as submitted. And I don't think, Denise, that we have any amendments that I need to include. Well, I'm wondering if you want to go ahead and make a motion on the hours so you can get that out of your way. Um, there were some things brought up regarding screening that I don't know if you want to spend more time on that, especially okay, depending on how the hours go. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll make a motion that we accept the hours as proposed. Okay, do we have a second? Aye. I call the roll, Judy. Alarm is going to get snapped. Sure. Uh, Styles. No. Sims. Ah, uh, yes. Pelzell. Yes. Yes. 
read. Yes. So that motion passes. Okay. So there was a question about screening. The screening was around the smoking area and so forth. Yeah, no, I think the the fact that there's a foot between the cooler and the wall, I mean, I think that's that's sufficient. I mean, I don't know that we need to start worrying about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The um, the question, though, about the edge of the parking lot, and I don't know, is there some way to put some kind of a screening back there along the alley? There, you can always do. You can always put a fence at the edge of the asphalt, but I'm telling you that from a safety point of view, you don't want to create blind spots mm -hmm. down the alley. You know, it's going to, a, a fence would cause more issues than a non fence. There's no doubt about that. I mean, the fence doesn't do anything to prohibit the sound. Is there space there for some vegetation or something? Just to kind of. Oh, you would have to build it out of concrete block. Right, right. It's, in, it's all paved right at this point. That wall yeah. From where it is. But yeah, I went down, I drove back down to the alley and around and so forth. I just didn't see that that much of the space. Yeah, you've got you vegetation know. in the backyard all the way down the alley. Yeah. In fact, some people, you know, the village right. complains about the nuisance of that. Um, but I just, you know, from a, any kind of parking lot where you've got a blind spot created, it just becomes junk collecting, nightmare, trash, and. You know, I just don't see an advantage. It's not going to solve the problem sound. Yeah, it's like not a very pretty alley right. right now. Yeah. Okay. okay Is there anything else we need to talk about? You think anything else you, you missed? Um, I just want to make sure, I just, which is probably going to end up being typically when there's a new uh, construction, the superintendent um, of electric water distribution, storm, and sanitary sewer has to sign off. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that the staff has to sign off on the design of this new storm swiddle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want in that in the approval that uh, Yellow Spring staff sign off on. I just, yeah, I just want, I want someone on the storm, on the storm, storm the staff design. You say utilities and storm water. New. The utilities also? Sure. Well, they already so they have, have to they, do that. They okay. all, but, right. I mean, so in this case, they're already there, so there's, so there isn't any need to. So it's just um, the storm swale but, design. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's just going to be a conversation between that staff person and the person designing the storm swale. And you're okay with the parking spaces? Yeah, I'm okay with the parking spaces. And, and signing, they have to come back anyway, right? Sorry? For signage, they have to come oh, back Oh, yeah, that's anyway. a separate yeah. thing. It doesn't need to come before planning commission. Right. Okay. Anything else, then? Do you want to make another motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, con conditional uh, use with the... Uh, Storm swell in uh, utilities being signed off by the village. Uh, our, do we say the village? Do we say uh, the, just the utilities uti uh, superintendent? Or, the, yeah. uh, utility superintendent. And it says the special events, brew pub, and retail store. Mm -hmm. And the retail store is permitted already, so right. it doesn't okay. need to be a part of this. It's just. Okay. Mm -hmm. I second it. Okay, Judy. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just get that straight. Um, so I've got the, the approval language as it is in the in Denise's recommendation. And do we need it to say reduction in number of parking spaces or are we? Uh, is, yeah, yeah, I it, would say it okay. needs to say that. Okay, and then I've got well, the parking spaces with, as with proposed the, as with proposed. the bike rack. Right, mm -hmm. that's how you can say it. And the number of parking spaces as proposed with the bike rack. Do you need? Do you want to give a hard number there? There was forty-eight. Forty-eight. Like, so, so you're approving forty a um, um, minimum of forty-eight parking spaces with bike racks provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Minimum forty-eight. 
And then storm swill design is to be signed off um, <coughs> by the utility superintendent yes. for the final design. Anything on outdoor coolers or lighting? No. Okay. And I've got a second by Styles. Are you comfortable? Everyone's comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Sims? Yes. Styles? Yes. Pozell? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay. And uh, one more thing, Judy, you think we had the minutes ready before I leave so I can help approve? <laughs> yeah. By, uh, by 9 o'clock, or did you mean by <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It took a while. Yeah, you can come back. Welcome back. <laughs> so, so it's possible. I just have to find the minutes for that. So. It's still relatively new as a code. Yeah, right. it's only four years. We're still finding stuff. We're still finding mm -hmm. stuff. And Denise yeah. and Matt, I am not going to be here in January, February. Okay. Okay. New business. Mm -hmm. Um. So another new business is that um, is I I'm up in February and I told Judy that I was not going to reapply. I've done my ten years. Yeah. So ten years. Ten years. So Rose, be ready. So you guys need to think about you know I mean ultimately all the chairs got to do is run the meeting right? Yeah. I mean. You move. do a great job. Well, I just try to move things yeah. along. Is all. And you're funny. And, you're charming. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and, and the chair the chair doesn't have. To move. Their vote is no more powerful exactly. than, yes. than mine. Mine is no more powerful than mine. And, and that's the way it's supposed to be. So which, whichever one of you thinks, do you want to sit here and try to move the meetings along? Think about it and because there's an opportunity there. Yeah. And Jerry, you know, I mean, just because you're going off council doesn't mean you, you can't come, come back, back on. on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think there's something Wait. written in there. I, I don't think so. That yeah. council members cannot be appointed to a commission until so many years after they have served. You better work on that on your last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put under Janet Plain? Yeah, put it in the charter, so, right? I, mean, I, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to say, um, also that uh, under new business that this is Jessica's last meeting because she's moving on to other things. Oh, so, really? yeah. Yes. So Wow, it's a major all... turn over here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we'll miss you. Good luck. I yeah. miss you too. So, thank you. Oh, you're still here, Denise. I'm still here. You got to put up with me still. So, okay. Hey, so, so, <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> Um, no big changes <laughs> here yet. Um, but I was going to say, so as with any board of commission, Matt, you're more than welcome to stay on until a, a, a person is found. I, I need to place the ads in the newspaper. That process moves forward. If you're willing to sort of see the commission through, uh, well, your term ends February. Is that not mm -hmm. the case? So, I mean, if, uh, we can get it rolling now. So if you're... So does that mean you attend the February meeting? Uh, he can, he meeting. can no. attend until June if we don't. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to make that happen. But. And, and finally, I wanted to mention, though, too, that this is Susan's last planning commission right. meeting as well. Thank, Thank you for all your being here. I just think you're so great how you debate. I just think it's really great. He'll <laughs> still come. And I thought this was a really good Debate. I'm on both sides. I, I just thought it was great. It's great. Spencer's gonna be wonderful. <laughs> oh, welcome aboard, Spencer. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, with that, what, should I tell Judy to go ahead and uh, start advertising? Yes. Okay. Yes. Please. Okay. Judy, start advertising. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna throw your name in the hat. No. <laughs> Should you tell me to put your so name in that? You mention also that we have a new planning commission uh, oh, alternate. Okay. You did mention that, Mr. Williams. Yes, Mr. Williams. Williams. Yes. Williams. Uh, Williams. Williams. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Second on that? Uh, yeah, oh. somebody did. Yeah, yes. someone Aye. did. Jerry. They all did. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Very good meeting, folks.